Well, hello, and welcome to this hands online learning session. I am Bev Ford with the AIM Center, and I'm here with my colleague, Elin. At the AIM Center, we're committed to working towards a more equitable world through math and science education. One of the ways we're doing this is by working to expand making to a broader audience. You can learn more about what we're doing by visiting our website, aimcenter.org. Along the way today, you can use the chat and question and answer feature to ask questions and share your progress. Make sure to change your settings in the chat to everyone so we can all collaborate together. Today, we are gonna be exploring sewing and some different ways we can use sewing to learn and make together. The material you're gonna to want to have is some thick paper, cardstock, maybe a thin cardboard from a food box, something like that, um, a pen or pencil, some thread, scotch tape if you have it, um, and a needle. If you don't have a needle, no worries. If you get a single hole punch and have some yarn, you'll still be able to join us um, and play along. So if you wanna grab these items right now, um, go ahead and do that if you haven't had a chance. And if you have the items, why don't you put in the chat, what are some ways you experience sewing in the world? So one of the things we love to do is to just see where sometimes a simple thing like sewing is all around us. So Elin, where do you see sewing in the world and what's been your experience with it? Um. Yeah, thanks, Bev. Uh, yeah, it's interesting as as I've been delving into making and thinking about um, sewing and its connection to to steam. I've seen it um, all around me. Just um, I'm wearing one of my favorite um, shirts that has some decorative sewing on it, some embroidery on it. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. love the symmetry in that shirt. Yeah, it's this is what I'm aspiring to, you know, in my in my exploration of making with sewing. Um, but my experience with sewing is something that started when I was young. Um, when I was a ch when I was young, my mom used to um, used to sew clothing for myself and my sister, some matching okay. outfits. I remember vacations with some matching outfits, oh, matching fine. jumpers. Um, I was able to take um, take sewing in eighth grade as my elective, which was really okay. fun. But I didn't really make my make connections to to um, steam, which um, as we begin to explore today, I think there's some really interesting connections to steam that we can make. Awesome. I know sewing, my mom sewed and my grandma sewed, but I have not necessarily like using a sewing machine can be a little bit intimidating at times for me. Although I have three kids and I made some baby quilts for them when they were, when they were little. And that was kind of a, a fun little adventure. Someone in the chat, Mar Marina mentioned closing a turkey. Yes. So I love yes. cooking yes. and that's <laughs> a great application for it sewing. Is. Um, because certainly we want to keep all that stuffing inside and, and keep it yummy. So I even made like a pinwheel of with, uh, and I'm doing some knotting and tying. So that could kind of even maybe loosely be considered sewing in the kitchen. <laughs> so with, with sewing, there's like functional sewing. And then like you kind of put on your shirt, the embroidery, which is more artistic. And I think it's been really interesting in some of the research I did for this hands online cultures have it in both areas. I mean, one of the interesting places that I hadn't thought of was just, um, my son hurt himself and you have to sew sometimes your skin closed. Um, so even in the medical field, that sewing is a functional thing that um, is necessary as we're maybe needing to be stitched up for different things. Um, but there's this is an example on the slides is just an, a wood Native American sewing tool. And I know that whether they were making clothes or maybe creating some artistry around the clothes that they made, um, 
lots of different cultures have done that. And I think it's fun to just see that form of expression and even the ability to make their world a better place because of sewing. Yeah. So, um, so today we're going to be also thinking about spatial awareness with sewing. So spatial is a topic we've talked about before in our hands online. If you are new to this topic, spatial is kind of a foundational component of STEAM learning. When we looked into this more in depth, we found that the research shows how important spatial is, even if it's maybe not a specific standard. Um, it's one of those critical features that when you are working in a STEAM field is very important. So, um, Elin, tell us a little bit about spatial and where you see that happening with sewing. Yeah, it's really interesting. As I've been exploring sewing more myself, just as a just as a way to be, you know, um, I like to explore more the artistic side of sewing. But um, as I've had the chance to explore and even do some some um, sewing activities with young children, um, you really use a lot of um, spatial language. Um, connected to your um, to what you're actually doing with the needle and thread, um, you use language like um, above, below, or underneath, um, under and over. Okay. Um, and you know, right side, left side, okay. um, diagonal, and and so all those words are really connected to this idea of spatial reasoning and knowing where we are and where things are situated in space, which is really um, critical to to uh, and connected to some geometry or a lot of geometry that um, that we know children experience when they get to you know elementary elementary school and beyond middle school high school so definitely with in the K-12 realm. And so um, if they have those skills that are connected to spatial reasoning, it makes those, those concepts and geometry uh -huh. um, more concrete for, for them. Okay. Awesome. Well, I know that some of that language above and below and under and over can be really challenging, especially for young kids, because it depends on you know, where the object's position is. So, and that's partly why we talk about it a lot because the more it can be done in a playful context, the easier it, it is for a child to just learn that language while they're doing something. So STEAM is what we're gonna be paying attention to as well as we sew today. So where is the science? Where is the technology and the engineering and the arts and the math? So. Definitely keep your eyes open for maybe some unexpected places where that might be happening. And if you're new to STEAM, one of the things that was really helpful for me um, as I learned more around technology and engineering is thinking about technology as a tool. So that picture that we showed earlier of those Native American, um, that Native American needle, that was a new technology at some point. Maybe it's not as new now, but it's still a technology. And so if you can think about technology as the tools that you're using um, and then engineering kind of as design. So we saw that beautiful design on Elin's shirt and we're gonna see some more beautiful designs as well today. Um, but that's engineering is, is more kind of just thinking around design. So I hope that you're excited to practice some sewing. Um, one of the ways that we're going to collaborate today is with a Padlet. So um, I'm going to put in the chat a Padlet that if you want to open and share um, your progress with us, we would love to see how you're doing and just create a space for all of you that are here today to learn and grow together as our own little sewing circle. Um, so. Elin, why don't you share, you brought, I know you brought some things um, that were some examples of sewing. Did you want to share some of those with us now? Sure. Um, well, I just, just before we get started on our making, making portion, just in terms of, again, we're going to be exploring um, sewing more of artistically. So thinking about using our needle and thread as, as um, the paintbrush, 
But uh, one of the favorite things that I have received um, when I was teaching was a gift at the end of um, the school year from a parent um, who's, uh, who did stitchery. She was um, the student, um, they're a Hmong, um, so Southeast Asian, and they do this beautiful um, stitching. Wow. And so she made, um, I can pull, show you the whole thing. Um, I love those squares inscribed inside of the other squares. That's beautiful. Yes. And I think this is more of where, you know, where you cut out the pieces and you stitch, you make um, a design by stitching the pieces of cloth. Okay. Definitely something that, that um, you can explore, but I just love the, um, the symmetry in this, um, all the shapes and she made one for myself. And this was when I was doing my student teaching. So uh, many years ago, so myself and um, the, the teacher and the, the aide at the time. And I just, it's just amazing. I just love it. It's just such a, you know, I was just so like, um, just that she made this and gave it to me. It's like, oh my gosh, um, yeah, amazing. Um, cause I can't imagine the hours that that took. So, um, that's just something that I've kept and just enjoy looking at and using it in my home. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, I know that the, some adventures of my sewing. So we have here a little picture. Um, I was just trying to kind of explore, like from more of a child perspective, when it comes to like using, uh, some thread and needle, um, as a paintbrush. Okay. And what was so hard, well, I, maybe I should ask everyone, which shape do you think was the hardest? I have a bush, or at least I attempted to make a bush and a house and a roof and some clouds and the sun. Does anyone want to make a guess in the chat as to what was the hardest shape to try to make with this grid like um, feature? It's not all. Oh, the sun. Ooh, Sandra for the win. Yes, it was really confusing. I have to say I took it out a few times because I'm like, how do I make a circle when it's a grid? And so I, I mean, I think I was having experiencing some produ productive struggle as we like to call it in education. I ended up getting some grid paper out to try to help get what would be a close enough look to the sun before I found something that was satisfactory. So helpful tool. If you have some grid paper, if you really are wanting something more circular and you're dealing with um, fabric like this, that was definitely um, useful for me. So hopefully today you'll find some fun in your own exploration and we'll help each other out as we go. So Elin, let's start playing. What, what are we going to make today? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you our tools. Um, so we're going to explore some different type of stitching. So hopefully you have some, um, some, I'm just using cardstock paper about the size of an index card. So if you have index cards, that would be, that would work great. Um, and we're going to explore some stitching. So we're first going to make this stitch um, like this, and then I'm going to show you another stitch as well. Um, so I'm going to set those to the side. And I already have a piece that has the holes um, punched in them just for time. And I used a, you can see I've been really making a lot of doing. Some You've been having fun on there. <laughs> yeah. But this is the cardboard that has the little bit of space in between that has that like, um, uh, I don't know what you call it, but just a little bit of, um, it's a little thicker cardboard. So okay. if you put that underneath and just use your, um, your, your needle. Um, also, I, after a couple iterations, I started drawing a line. So my, my, um, my holes would be on a on a straight line, but you know, just we're exploring. So that's something that you could definitely do later. And this is, you can use um, these plastic needles work well too. So even using a plastic needle. Okay. And works. 
when when Elon, I know iterations is not as probably common of a word. We use that a lot in maker learning because we want you to do something multiple times because that's really where the learning is happening. As you, you're, we're going to get to see some of Elon's um, different iterations of of what she was exploring, and that's how we just continue to learn and grow. We try something a little bit new and tweak it. Yes. So iteration, another word would be like a, a try or an attempt. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take my card and I'm going to start in this corner at the top. And I'm going to go through um, the underneath. So using a lot of that spatial language. And now, gonna, was there a specific um, how far apart they were, Elin? Um, it doesn't matter, you know, I have them about a quarter, quarter, quarter of an inch. Okay. Um, apart. And then I, I went ahead and I had a knot on the back of my thread, but you can, um, definitely use just a piece of tape okay. to, to, um, fasten that at the, uh, underneath. So I just, um, yeah, went up from underneath the corner. And so now I'm going to, um, make the first stitch. I'm going to go in to this hole that's, um, at the bottom, the first one, not the corner, but the one that's, um, just next to that. And I put, if you're using like an index card, let's see, I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine going down and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 going across. Okay. And it probably just depends on how precise you want to be, whether or not, you know, Yes. how straight your lines are and stuff. So if you're in exploring mode, maybe yeah. it, it's not as big of a deal, but as you get a look or want a specific look, you have to start counting and, and get more precise. Exactly. So, so if you're just exploring right now, you just, you don't need to worry too much. You just want to have them. It doesn't worry about the um, number of holes you have. You, you might want to make sure they're about, they're evenly spaced apart. Um, but I just, I just sort of eyeballed the, the distance. So, okay, so hold, now hold on one minute, Elin. It looks like some people are having to make those holes. And so it's taking a little bit of time. So what we need to give them a little bit of time to make some of those holes. Cause it does, someone is waiting on, um, making, okay. um, making the holes. So, right. And also you, um, you know, I, um, made the holes with the needle, but you can also use um, a, hole, a hole punch as well. So if you have a hole punch handy, if that was one of the tools um, that you grab, you could definitely use a hole punch to make um, to make the holes. And I, you know, a hole punch when you're working with younger kids will probably be a good idea. But again, we're just we're exploring this. For our own, and and also too, um, just a note: if I had these pre-done just for um, just for ease for this webinar, but you can, if you just want to, um, like make the dots with with a pencil, and if you have a pretty sharp needle, you could probably make the hole as you're sewing. With, with the cardstock. So that's another thought too, if you just wanna um, like make the dots on here. Okay. I just I just did the, pre, the holes because you don't wanna see me like, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we're all probably doing it right now as, as I'm making my holes in my, in my cardstock here. So it looks like you didn't, so you went to the second hole, not the one in the corner, I went to the second hole. Okay. And again, feel, keep on um, sharing your thoughts in the chat because more than happy to slow down or. Yeah. Um, so then I'm going to, from underneath, go to the second, 
to the next hole and come up. So now we're above the paper. We're above the paper. And it looks like we made a, a kind of a small line on the back of our. Yeah, if, if we turn it over, it looks like you have a small stitch on the back. Oh, someone needs you to start over. Can we start from the beginning again? Sure. One of the things that I know that as I was practicing some of these that I didn't realize is when I didn't do the very next stitch, I had these big lines across my paper and I ended up wasting a lot of string. So <laughs> there are some tricks of the yeah. trade that once you do it a few times, you realize. So Ruby, we are going to start over um, and Elon will show us where to begin in that corner there. Oops. And this is a good, it, if you're um, working with a yarn that's pretty fuzzy, a good um, strategy is using your tape as a piece of technology to help you thread your needle again. Ah. Yeah, that wasn't my favorite part of sewing, threading needles. <laughs> So tiny. Okay. So again, we're going to stop start from um, the top corner. I go up from the bottom and come up. And then I'm going to go down to not the not the corner, but the next one over. Okay. There's our spatial language again. Next. Above, and then I'm gonna below. I'm gonna go to the next one over and come up. And again, uh, like Bev was saying, that helps save some yarn because you're not just looping and looping. And then I'm gonna come back up and go to the next. Pull the next space down and stitch that. So we've now done four holes. We started at the top, mm -hmm. looks like the top left, and then went down to the hole right next to the corner. And then we went back up the one next to that, and then went up to the second hole um, right underneath that first one that right. we did. And then to again to save some yarn, I'm going to go down to the next one. Okay. The third third hole down. Okay. From underneath and come up. So I'm noticing a pattern. We're always going to go mm -hmm. under the one that's underneath um, when we're looking along the side there, and the one next to it on the bottom. Right. And then um, I'm going to come across again down to, and if you're thinking about this, if you're, um, this could be thought of as part of a, a quadrant, um, we're going down to the, you know, we have the X and Y axis. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Um, so the third one across. And then I'm gonna again, come from underneath and come up. And then go to this edge here and go to the fourth hole. And then from underneath. Huh. 
come uh, come um, through up through that one again, and then go across and go to the fifth hole across. And come up. And then go down. I'm running out of thread. So it creates this almost like um, net effect. Yeah, it almost looks like a little basket in the corner. Yeah. All right, if you have more questions about this, please feel free to put them in the chat. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know what? Don't worry, Ruby, because soon we're going to let put people off on their play break and we'll just have Elin start all over again and we'll start from the beginning. Don't give up. We've got this. And this could be, you know, you could um explore however you want. Um, I'm just, I'm connecting it to each one, but what if you um, went to every, you know, um, if you have, if you've made your holes just exploring um, and connected like every other one. Um, so I'm gonna show you, cause I ran out of, again, this is just one, one, like one type of exploration you can do with your, with your stitching. Um, I'm going to show you one more on the same piece of card. So this will be like our, our sample card. So if you have a um, an edge that's already that's already has some holes in it. Or again, you want to um, poke, uh, punch some holes with, with um, a hole punch. Or again, if you have a sharp needle, that works well too. So I'm gonna, I'm going to, I have some holes already. Um, and I'm not gonna, I'm not going to start with this first hole. I'm actually going to start with the second one up. And I'm going to come up. No. Let me try that again. No. <laughs> what next iteration? I went started with the wrong. Um, This is where if you guys want to put tape on the back to hold that thread in place, that definitely can be a helpful tool or technology. Um, yeah, and I'm actually going to do that now because I think that is going to hold. Okay, so, so I started with the second um, hole and then I'm going to go down through this first hole. And then I'm going to come up through the next hole. And come back in through that same, that same hole, the second second hole up. And this actually creates a um, continuous line. Um, so again, it's called the back stitch because you're coming, you're coming up and you're coming back to the um, 
to the stitch that you just did. So again, I'm coming up. So if we wanted to make a line, mm -hmm. so that would be kind of like this example of what the house is, although because this is, this is actually shelf liner um, that mm -hmm. I was experimenting I awesome. using. <laughs> Um, but it's the same idea. It's a way to make a line, um, kind of like you would paint with something. So this is called a back stitch. You said, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So if you wanted to, again, um, and I, I'll, um, finish this stitch and then show you some examples. So these are just two types of, um, explorations you could do with um with with um need a needle and thread or yarn and some um cardboard so again this one where you're connecting across and then this um back stitch and so i'm going to show you just some once I sort of explored those some things that I did. So I, um, again, I did the the netting or the connecting the um, the different um, going up and across on this side. Then I did the same thing on the other side, and then I drew a um, a heart and punched some some holes around and use this point to think about connecting each of those and made the shape of a heart that way instead of just stitching all around. Okay. So then I was, I really wanted to think about exploring the neck, you know, that negative space of a heart with, with the yarn. So I started to explore again, I made the, I drew a heart and punched out some holes punched out some holes on the border and then decided to play with two colors of yarn and did so every other one did the red connecting. Um, and then I, I did the purple, but I was a little upset that I had these leftover um, holes on this side. <laughs> so you needed a new iteration to make so sure that <laughs> try again. So I needed to try again because that was not that was yeah, but I th I thought that looked neat with the negative space. So then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to to make sure I have the same amount of holes around the heart that I do around the border. So I have um I think 40 around I used 40 holes for the heart and then 40 holes around the border and so ah. when I did every other one then again I I started with the red and then the, did um clockwise and so when I stitched the um the purple I thought well what would it look if I went the other direction so I did that and so that was sort of fun so what a great place for like doing division because I know that I know that I kind of just messed around and I wasn't really too precise, but knowing that you had 40 holes around the heart and you wanted every hole in the heart to connect to one on the outside edge, and then you've got your different um, um, lengths of your rectangle, but you still want one of those points to go out to each of them. I mean, what a beautiful division and you make something great from it. So I feel like that's a yeah. good application for kids to see even some of the relevance of where division is helping you create beautiful art. Right. Or even thinking about if I knew that there had to be 40 and I did the holes in the corners first and I subtracted four from 40 and how many I had left and then had to, to divide that amongst the four borders. Um, the same thing with the heart. I did a hole here and a hole here. Okay. And then subtracted two from 40 and then how many did I have to have and so that was sort of that was fun <laughs> um, number exploration a lot of counting um, and so then I explored with some different type of um, 
thread as well. So I just had some leftover, some embroidery thread. So I did the, um, again, that connecting um, stitch that makes the net and then did um, the back stitch to make a heart and then some um, just exploring, exploring across and then another one on another um, net stitch or connecting tangents on this side. Okay. So and for those of you, if you felt a little bit like you want to still try that again, we will go back and we'll try that stitch one more time. But if you're hopefully some of you are already making that. Um, so um, Elin's just trying to help inspire maybe something that you can try to show like different examples. So hopefully you're playing along with us um, while Elin is showing us those examples. But remember, there's those two stitches that we've tried. We tried making that netting. And then she showed us the back stitch and the heart is, is an example of, of how you could possibly use that. Yes, and this is all about ex exploration. And um, uh, since we're um, in, you know, since it's February and close to Valentine's Day, I sort of was, you know, just got on to think using the heart as a shape, but you could use any shape, circles, um, a square. Um, and, and this one I started by making, I thought wanted to explore different shapes. So I traced a heart and a circle and punched the, um, uh, made some holes. And my original thought was I was gonna do this type of idea, but had start with the circle first and do like, then do the, um, the heart also like opposite direction and have this effect, but it didn't look, it was a little messy and you couldn't see the heart. So I took it all out, <laughs> but I still had the holes. So I just decided to make um, a heart using, um, you know, connecting the, the dots or the holes from the circle and the heart, and then you use a, a back stitch to do a border. Um, well, and that's another example of like how shapes can be inscribed inside um, other shapes. And I know that was one of the things that I liked about that cloth that you had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then my last one was just, I wanted to do another one using the back stitch. So again, I made a, um, a template for a heart, cutting it out and then traced it um on the back punch holes and then use the back stitch to to make the hearts and then um use the uh like a connecting one from the point of the bottom of the heart on these but then the top so these are just actually these are just really inspiration because um again these take time and so I just wanted to show you some examples of what you can can do and explore um, and just give you a couple of ways that you could do some stitching and then um, let you explore. Okay, well, hopefully people have already started playing, but Elin, why don't we go through that one more time? Um, because I know someone had specifically asked, um, we want, they wanted to make that net, um, sure. but we were getting a little lost. So if you want to kind of go over that one more time, um, and it might even be helpful if people want to number the stitches. Um, so, you know, which one to do next. Um, I know sometimes that helps me kind of keep track of it. So, um, so we're gonna, for those of you, if you're already making something else, you keep having fun. And again, share those ideas in the Padlet. Um, I can throw that um, link back in there for that. Um, just again, for inspiration and we'll just see what we're making today. Let me get some, some more the red or yarn and then I'll go over the um the one where you're connecting where we're 
pretending we're mathematicians um, exploring the coordinate grid. The, there you go. <laughs> From the X to the Y, the y, X and Y axis. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to have some holes punched. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> start from the corner. Okay, so on the top, looks kind of, I don't know, I might call that on the top um, of our Y axis. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use some tape quickly to um, tape it down because I did not, not in this. So this would be our Y axis. <clears throat> and then you're going to um, come down to the, to what would be like the X axis or and you're going to um go from above and have your needle go through that so it's the second hole on the bottom second hole on the bottom okay all right does everyone hopefully have that Think of that. So if you were numbering it, that would be, you know, maybe the bottom number two, if you put had, that first hole was a number one, bottom number two. <clears throat> and then we're going to go into the third hole. Mm -hmm. We're coming in from the back. Yeah, so I'm coming, coming in from underneath and then coming up. <laughs> And I have a lot of thread because I didn't want to run out of thread. So then I'm going to go. Um, so not the top, but the next one down. Okay. So the second hole from the top. Second hole from the top. And I know that probably right now it feels a little bit tricky, but we are going to start following a pattern. And as soon as you, you kind of notice that pattern, I think it'll make it a little bit easier. And see how she went to the very next hole. And if you remember that in the back, we're having these little lines because we're trying to save some um, string or some yarn. Yeah. So now I... I went to the third hole down and I'm coming up from the from underneath. And then I'm going to go uh, to this um, to the to the line on the bottom. And so I'm going to go to the um, the fourth one over. Okay. And if we're thinking that, yeah, so the fourth one over and going up from the top. <clears throat> All right. And then I'm still on the bottom. <clears throat> then I'm going to come up again. And then I'm going 
across to the um, the fourth hole down. All right. So hopefully that's enough for people to kind of get the idea. And if not, no worries. This webinar is going to be uploaded to our website and you can rewatch it and pause um, as needed. So um, we are going to um, tell you a little bit about some other examples of sewing, um, but please continue to sew um, and create whatever it is you're having fun creating. Um, one of the things that I think is so powerful in sewing is just how patterns can build these beautiful artistic designs. So um, one of the things that we, I, Elin and I were talking about, because she had shared with me that beautiful um, cloth that she had gotten um, at when she was a teacher, just some of the beautiful artistry in Mong's um, embroidery. And so um, story cloths are a great example of just how they've used stories within their culture to just display the art and tell their stories. So, uh, and I might say this wrong, so please forgive me. Um, a panatab damni is literally translated the flower cloth of the people's customs and traditions. And my friend that is Hmong was telling me about how this is how they tell their stories. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter is adopted and she is Cambodian. And one of her favorite stories was the story that we're going to talk a little bit more about a refugee girl that was learning how to make a story cloth. And it was just telling um, the story of her family. And so what I found really fascinating is it's a, a whole family affair as they make these story cloths that the men would actually trace the pictures and the women of the village would add the embroidery in them. So just a great example of making in a culture where it was just this community event. Um, they also make things closer to what Elin had um, shown us. And those are just panatabs and that's um, translated as flower cloths. And these have more geometric designs um, that they put on their clothing or maybe on like a baby carrier for celebrations. And there's just, there's such beautiful symmetry that's happening in them. Um, if you've looked and know more about um, art, you probably are even know a little bit more than me about form where you're looking at the different, which, what are you noticing? Like, what is your eye drawn to with it? And that's where they're talking about that layering of even the cloth on it. So, um, Miss Vang is my friend who's working on, I think it's supposed to be a belt or a sash um, that she was embroidering. And she was so excited when she just connected all of the steam that that is happening in this custom that she has and that she finds so much joy in and how this is a way for us to even involve our kids possibly in our own culture or practices that we do. So Another story of a maker that's just an everyday maker um, is my friend, um, Marsha Jones. So she took up sewing kind of like Elin where she had taken a class and she wanted to make some Halloween costumes for her kids. So I know Elin mentioned um, her mom making um, some clothes for her and her sister. And for Marsha, sewing is just, it's maybe a little bit more functional in that she wanted to have some fun Halloween costumes. She described making this dinosaur um, for her son. But her learning of sewing happened a lot through YouTube. And so really it's like we can take up some of these making and explore. And now with the internet, there's lots of different videos that we can watch that will just help us maybe learn a new skill. Um, and be able to apply it. And these are some dance dancers that she made costumes for. Um, she runs a um, dance studio for kids that, um, and she wants to make sure everyone is able to um, participate and costumes, if you have a dancer, they can be very expensive. And so she helped make those more affordable for the kids. And that's part of what we wanna do at the AIM Center is just highlight that make, we're all makers and that you don't have to maybe have sewing as um, like your job, but that maybe that's just a hobby that you do. 
<clears throat> so if you've had any ideas um, for the sewing that you've been doing or questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat as well. Um, we're definitely excited to hear how you're sewing. And on our um, Padlet that I put a link to, there's some pictures of an ocean scene that I was kind of exploring with different yarn um, and, and also those cultural examples as well. And the research article that um, I found some of this work around the, the Hmong um, sewing. So Elin, I know you did some sewing with a classroom. Do you want to share just a little bit about how that worked and in case anyone wants to maybe try this with students, um, any words of encouragement or things that went really well for you when you were doing some sewing in the classroom? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to also, um, well, actually, Bev, had, on the slide you see, um, I did some stitching with some second graders and we made, um, we stitched a star. Um, and it was it was during December, so it was really fun. They were very into the holiday colors. Um, but if you can see on the dot cam, what I did was I had them um, think about um, before we even did the the holes. I had them think about where the points of a star would be, and um, so we we talked about we even. Um, stretched and use our body to think about the top, um, the top of the star being like your head and then stretching out okay. um, your hands, that would be the, the next two points. And then your feet would be the, the points on the bottom. Okay. And um, so I had them think about that. And then ha um, they drew the dots on their paper and connected them. Um, and then uh, I helped them do the hole punch. Actually, we did a two-step process. I They drew it one day and we did the holes and then they stitched the second day. But then, so stitching was, um, we we used the just yarn and the plastic needles and just taped the yarn to the back and had them talked about coming up through the bottom and then okay. stitching and then, um, where would they need to have their needle come up to do the next stitch? Um, and it was really interesting for them to think about, you know, okay, where where does my needle need to come up? Um, or where do I need to put my needle underneath to make it um, the stitches connect? And so that my my thread won't come out, like I won't undo the stitch that I just did. So again, sure, thinking sure. about where their needle is, um, and so in thinking about what what um, the thread was going to look like on the back, like this one, I actually worked on it. So the stitches made the pentagon on the back, okay. um, which was sort of fun. That's but, like the more advanced version. I don't know. If yes, I <laughs> the, the second graders didn't, didn't explore that. OK, that's for <laughs> those adult learning. Yeah, but again, so just working through um, making using the yarn to make the star because they know how to draw stars but can they use it with um can they make it with the with the yarn and the needle sure stitching? and then they were so excited to again once they had made the star um like you can see on that picture some of them turned it into the top of a christmas tree or a star in the sky they completed their picture by you know um drawing in the rest of the details and we glued it on the back of a piece of paper and they were so excited to take it home and and show their family like what they made um which was which it's always exciting exciting to show somebody something that you've made with like your own two hands it's just it's um they yeah so that was that was fun um but like bev you were saying it it really does just involve simple materials again this is just cardstock um the yarn and the um and the plastic needles which you can get on uh, amazon and then i love that you use the uh shelf liner for right. that yeah that was really that's a great 
um, that was a great material to to learn or to explore with. Right. And I think that part of, I know in classrooms, just being able to explore shapes with kids, um, so often the shapes are already on the piece of paper. And so it's just identifying it's a square or it's, you know, a pentagon, but even inside that, that um, star is a pentagon. And I noticed there's five triangles there. And for young kids to be able to actually make those shapes, and maybe it's not a, um, a traditional looking pentagon or hexagon, but it has six sides. And now there's this just natural place for kids to be able to identify the shapes and, and, and be able to explore different ways of making polygons. So I, that's, I think what can be so exciting with sewing is that we can have some simple tools for kids, for them to start noticing things and maybe have some more play around, um, the math or the science um, or the, the tools that they're using, whether it's like you said, that plastic needle, or maybe mm -hmm. you don't have, you don't want to buy the needles. So you just put a little bit of tape on the end of the yarn and they start yeah. going in and out and front and back and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, Elin, you found some books as well um, that were connected to sewing and that's always fun in the classroom as well. Um, you want to tell them about the books that you found? Sure. Um, yeah, the first one is one that you mentioned um, called The Whispering Cloth by um, Peg Dietz Shia. And that is a, that um, go explores the um, the story cloths that you were sharing about, which come from Southeast Asia. Um, and then the the other book is the keeping quilt by Patricia Polacco and it talks about a um, how a family has this quilt that's been passed down and the quilt is made from um, bits and pieces of clothing and fabric from family members and just how it's passed down from one family to the next and how it's used as um, you know either a, a baby's quilt or a bedspread or a canopy um so that that is a great um a great story too and children's literature is always a great way to get um students connected and get them interested in exploring different concepts and ideas awesome well and if you guys want examples of those books i we put on the padlet um links to youtube videos of of someone reading them um so if you want to kind of check them out um before you actually buy them. Um, I know, like I said, The Whispering Cloth is a book that my daughter, I have read a lot of times. She really enjoyed um, listening to that story. Um, so hopefully you guys have had some fun um, sewing today. We hope that you will join us again next month. We do these hands-on lines once a month. And next month, um, Aileen Rizzo is going to be doing some papel picado. Um, again, simple tools, but making beautiful artistry with them. And so you're definitely not going to want to miss that. So join us March 8th um, for that. And if you want other fun hands-on activities, um, be sure to go to our website at aimcenter.org. And you can also find Elin and my email there. If you have questions for us, please don't hesitate um, to reach out. We love doing STEAM um, and exploring and making together. Yeah, and please share your, your photos on the Padlet or through our um, um, social media. We'd love to see your, your projects. Don't give up, keep on yeah. selling. That's right, that's right. Sewing circles are gonna become the new trend. <laughs> very relaxing and therapeutic. I think once you actually kind of get an idea. So, um, all right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope that you guys have fun. So just keep sewing and making and learning. Thanks. Bye.